Hello, in this video we're going to continue to look at how to read from files. But whereas in the last video we wrote all our file reading inside the main method, in this video we're going to create a couple methods that actually read information and pass us back something that's useful. So, let's dive in, shall we? So I've actually written the header for the first file, and the first, sorry, the first method, and the first method is going to take one string representing the name of the file. It's going to copy all the information of the file to a single string and return it. So we have a parameter of type string, and we have a return type of type string. So just like in the previous video, we're going to first create a file object. And then we're going to create a scanner object we're going to pass it the file. Okay. We could do this in two lines or if you want to be a little more compact, we could do it in one line. Now we're getting an error and if we hover over it, you'll see that the error says unhandled exception type, meaning that there's an exception that's occurring we don't handle. Now like I said in the, in the reading from a file PowerPoint presentation, we need to th we can throw that exception. So I can say I, I'm going to say it throws file not found exception, which is fine. But here's the problem in this case of throwing this exception is that if I come up here and now I'm going to invoke the method from here. So I'm going to say read string, and I'm going to say the name of the file is in.txt. And you'll notice now what happens is I have an error. This should be fine, but look at the error. It's an unhandled exception type. The reason why is because if I'm invoking read string from, from the main, and then read string happens to throw that exception, what throwing an exception means is that you're passing it to the method that invoked it. So now Jav so sorry, now main's gonna get that, that error, and main's gonna say, I don't know what to do with it. So we have to say here throws IO exception. Sorry, not IO, throws file not found exception. For simpler programs, this isn't a problem, and we can manage this pretty well. But when you have lots of methods, and it, it, it's going to come really cumbersome to manage it this way. So there's a better way to do this. And the better, better way to do this is actually we're going to use a try-catch structure in this case to manage this exception. Meaning that we're going to try something, and if it goes wrong, we're going to deal with the error right there. So we're going to try. And so this is the line that might cause the error. So we're going to try it there. And we're going to catch a file not found exception. And I could say, for example, I could put in here system.printline file not found. And then if something goes wrong, it will tell me that. So watch. If I come up here, and I call this, if I call this in3, and I'll tell you I don't have a file called in3, and I run this, file not found. Because what's happened is it's, it's come down here, it's taken that string in3.txt, tried to make the file, and it says, it doesn't work. I have an exception now that, that I have to deal with. The catch handles that exception. I can put anything I want in here. If I comment this out and run it, I get nothing. So you have to be careful now because if that exception happens, it's probably good to have something in here so that you know there's something that's gone wrong. Okay, so now we want to read the entire contents of the file. Let's change this back before I forget. Let's imagine for the sake of this, you don't know the size of the file. So you don't know how many lines it is. Turns out there's a really nice method to, to deal with that problem. We're going to write a while loop and we're going to say s dot has next line. Remember, any method that starts with has or is is going to return a boolean. So basically what this, this method does is says, hey, if you have a next line, keep going. So whether the file is five lines or 500 lines, this loop is going to continually, as long it's going to look, do another line? Yep, let's do it again. Another line? Yep, let's do it again. And I'm going to declare a string up here called text 
and I'm going to put nothing in it right now, and I'm going to say text is equal to text plus s dot next line. And I'm going to read the entire line. So now if I come down here, instead of return that, I'm going to return text. So now, what happens is I come down here, if I have a file, basically I'm going to work my way down the file. As long as there's another line, I'm going to read it and append it. Read it and add it to text. Read it and add it to text until I'm done, and then I return text. So if I come up here, let's make a string to take this return value. Um, I don't know. String, let's call this text as well. Bear in mind this is a different text than different variable. And let's run this. One, two, three, four. So what it's doing in this case is it's going in here and grabbing the text exactly as it sees. It grabs one, it grabs two, it grabs three, it grabs the space, and four, because it grabs the entire line. Again, I've said this a couple times, the key thing to appreciating how to read from a file is playing around with it. Let's imagine I want to modify this so it, it has each word in the file, but doesn't have, and each word is separated by a space. So what I can do to, to facilitate that is I'm going to make this from next line to next, and then I'm, going to, I'm actually going to add a space after each word. So now what it's going to do is it's going to read the next word, and again, remember s.next ignores spaces, and then it's going to add a space on the end. So if I run this now, one, two, three, four. Let's quickly write one more method. Actually, you know what? Let's pause this video and let's make one more video with this last method I'm thinking of drawing. Sorry, writing. I hope this helped. Always ask questions whether you're in my class or not. Um, and if you have requests, put them up there. Have a great day.